Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at Option Alpha, and in this video I want to start the journey of something that we're going to do together, which is going to be sharing the process of um, experimenting and testing on a pure EV strategy. And so what I mean by this is that now with the release of expected value, the way that we calculate it here inside of Option Alpha, which accounts for slope and all the differences in different strategies, what I wanted to do is I wanted to start an experimental portfolio, which I have built here that I'll kind of go over, and this is the first video on it. And then I'll document where this portfolio goes over the next couple months as we start to increase the frequency of trades in here to see if there's any validity to a pure expected value portfolio that really doesn't care about um, any of the differences for deltas or positions or whatever, just purely expected value. And so I built out kind of a, an experimental portfolio that I'm gonna share and again, document this whole journey with you guys because I eventually wanna to get to personally the point of if this works out and figuring out what works or what doesn't work and we'll make adjustments on the way, figuring out if we can just use this purely for trading. So forget all the technicals, forget all the trend stuff, forget VIX, forget the Fed, forget every meeting, CPI, whatever. Does pure expected value calculation work out with enough occurrences and can we switch any components of our portfolio to a pure expected value um, outcome portfolio? So I'm super curious, by the way, if you guys think this will work out since this is the first video on it, I'd love to know in the comments really quick. So just let me know or hit us up, shoot us a message or email or tweet or post or whatever. Do you think this is gonna work out? So here's how, here's how I constructed this to begin with. And I'm gonna do this continuously moving forward every couple uh, weeks just to show you where the portfolio is and how it's kind of moving, any adjustments that we make to it or any changes. I'll document all of this so you guys can see it with me as I go through this process, okay? So the whole idea around this was to generate a pure expected value portfolio. I'm just gonna call this the pure EV portfolio. And I actually created my own portfolio to do this inside of Option Alpha so I can separate out all of the information for this one. So inside of your trading accounts, by the way, you can go down here and you can create a brand new paper trading account and then you can name it whatever you wanna name it. I named mine Pure EV. So I had my original paper trading account, which was the first one that I started with here at Option Alpha. I've already got some bots running in there and I don't wanna co-mingle the performance of those testing bots to these performance bots. So I create a new account, just a new paper trading account called Pure EV. And so when I go back to my bot page now, I can filter all of my different accounts and I can just purely look at the Pure EV bots that I have. Now in this case, I'm running a lot of different bots, one bot for each ticker symbol. So that way I can kind of slice and dice the information a little bit better, see if different symbols work but you'll notice that I'm running these all on pretty liquid, pretty big name ETF symbols. There's no individual stocks here. Maybe we'll do that in another variation of this test and kind of split that out to stock positions and do some different filtering. But for now, we're gonna do it just on pure uh, ETF positions that we got into. And you can see I've already been running this for a little bit. So here's kind of the, the numbers and shakedown um, of these bots that we have right now. Currently, they're down about $1,600, negative 3.9% return, but they're just starting to increase the number of trades that they're doing. Some of these bots have done two trades. Some of these bots have done three trades, like this one's done three trades right now. So you can see that they haven't done a lot right now, but, but here's kind of where they've been right now. So so let me show you kind of how I built out these bots so you can see what I'm doing inside of these and, and how it's kind of working. So first thing that I did inside the settings of each of these bots is I'm allowing the bot to have about $3,000 of capital each. Um, that's where we get to basically the totals for all the positions and bots we have. So it's a small amount allocated to each individual symbol. Now this for me works well because I don't wanna have too much capital allocated to any one particular symbol. So logically I'm kind of following that process of allocating a small amount of capital to each individual symbol. And I'm gonna test that logic in this process as well. It would be stupid of me and it would be stupid of you if you did this and you said, oh, I'm gonna do $30,000 for uh, EEM or $50,000 for SPY, unless that represents a really, really small portion of your account, okay? So then I'm gonna say, all right, you can do 10, one position per day, so one brand new EV trade per day. Um, that gets a lot of occurrences if there's enough room in the portfolio to keep adding to this as it grows, and you're limited to 10 positions at once. So once you reach 10, stop doing what you're doing, okay? So that's kind of like the general safeguards. And then we added more safeguards in here as we went. 
But notice, first of all, that we have nothing but a pure EV experimental scanner. That's it. And the bot only has one input, which is the uh, actual ticker symbol. So throughout all of these bots that we're doing, the only thing that we changed in all of them, like if I go to IYR, or if I go to EWZ, or if I go to GLD, any of these things that we're changing, the only thing that we changed is actually the ticker symbol. That's it, that's the only thing. So if I make any changes to this bot as I go, it'll change all the automations because they share the same shared experimental automation that's in here, okay? But it's very light settings. So here's what I basically did. Inside this automation, it's dead simple. It's just a find a trade idea action. That's it. And I met, like, literally, I did this on purpose because there's no filtering whatsoever. And the whole idea around this potential experiment is if you forget everything and truly everything, does it work out? If we just price trades according to their expected value, um, and I think I've got a couple other little filters in there that just makes sense to do that. If we just price trades purely according to their expected value, do we find success doing that? Forgetting everything else. So you can see above here, basically anywhere around here, there's nothing. There's no RSI, there's no VIX filters, there's no Fed decision stuff, nothing. We're not doing any of that. We're just purely trying to find a new trade idea. So in this case, we're here's the position details. This is our ticker input. You can see also I left the strategy completely blank, okay? So here I left the strategy completely blank, which means, again, I don't care. It could be an iron condor, it could be a credit call spread, a credit put spread, it doesn't matter. You could choose to filter by strategy, but I don't care for this experiment. Trade whatever the heck you want to, just purely trade on EV, and that's it. The only thing I did filter here was I did five days or less. Now, the reason I did five days or less for this particular experiment is because I'm trying to figure out how to get as many trades on as possible. So, in this case, and we could you could do this for different portfolios if you wanted to, in this case, I said, look, I wanna focus on short duration trades where we can get a lot of repetition and get this whole portfolio's trade count up significantly higher. So if I did um, remove this filter, it might take trades that are 40 days, 60 days, something, you know, longer duration trades. And I don't want that for this experiment because then every occurrence is gonna take months and months and months to happen. That's not good enough for us. I wanna do lots and lots of trades, very short duration, because hopefully if it works on short duration, it should work on longer durations. Maybe not exactly one for one, but if it works on short durations, that's good. We can get a lot of recurrences in. Position size was standard, one contract, so that's easy. That standardizes everything across the board. Pricing from mid. Now look, this is where I think you can go a little bit different, and I'll even change it up right now. I think that we can go a little bit further from mid. And the reason I wanna go a little bit further from mid is I want to bake in some, some bigger slippage for the purposes of actually doing the experimental paper trading. I wanna bake in more slippage than I normally would have. So if I normally would say for a live portfolio, maybe three or four cents from mid, maybe I go five or six cents from mid, that doesn't mean it's gonna get bad pricing all the time, but it's gonna allow the paper trading bot to go further through that for its experimentation and, cap and, and orders and try to get some, some higher slippage potentially or allow for more slippage. So if it still works with higher slippage, it should work with lower slippage later on. And then exit options, I did something here which I thought was pretty standard, okay? So I said, look, if you get 80% of the credit, take the position off, okay? Now look, in this case, it's not letting it go all the way to expiration, but it is including some of the things that we do normally for profit taking, but just at a much higher level. So. Again, you can experiment with this on your own if you want to, and you can do no profit taking, or you can do whatever you want to do. But I said, look, really high credit, 80%. If you get 80% of the premium that you're taking in, which in many cases is most of the premium except for a dollar or two dollars for some of these spreads, take the position off and recycle the capital. And then I did nothing else except for running it pretty much to expiration. Now at expiration, so I said close it 15 minutes before expiration and use 100% of the bid ask spread. Now again, this is where I wanted to do this for testing where I deliberately told the bot use all of the bid ask spread. So this will 100% mean more slippage for exiting positions. But again, if it still works out with all these additional slippage components in there, then I'm okay with that. Okay. Now I went down to the entry criteria. 
the bot has opened less than one new position today. That's great, which means that again, I just want to double check. It hasn't opened multiple positions in the same day. That's fine. And then down here for position criteria, all I did was I said expires before the next earnings, but that doesn't really matter for any of the ETFs that you have. So you can leave it checked or uncheck it, but just in case you do have some um, uh, regular stock symbols that you want to trade this on or you want to experiment on, I would for this experiment for EV, make sure that it expires before the next earnings event because that is such a volatile random event that could you know sway some of the calculations and stuff like that. So make sure you, you take that out. And the only other thing that I put in here was just a couple low level filters. One, EV has to be greater than zero. So this was like the main one that's included in here. I will not get into, there's no trades that this experimental bot portfolio or bots will get into with expected value less than zero. So it has to be positive expected value. It will not do anything that's less than positive expected value. The other thing that I did, and you can choose to do this or not, but I wanted to do higher probability trades. So if you didn't do this and you didn't include some sort of probability filter, it might enter trades that are 50, 60, 45 percent probability of success, but still with a positive expected outcome. But me personally, because this is the way I trade, I wanted trades that had a greater than 70 percent chance of success um, and it had to have positive expected out outcome. So I wanted to make sure it was positive BV plus high probability of success. The last thing I did is I did max loss less than $500. This ensured that I didn't get overly wide positions for the spreads that I was looking at. So sometimes if you if you don't include a max loss per contract, you might end up with a spread that's really, really wide. And so you get a little bit of premium, but you have this huge potential um, existential risk or kind of tail risk on the portfolio. And again, because personally I want to convert this into a system of bots or trades that I do later on, I'm going through this process and journey kind of trying to emulate as much as possible some of the things I'll do without doing the other stuff like RSI or VIX or Fed or whatever. So here I'd say max loss per contract, $500. That's where we keep it tight, small positions and really get that position count up. The other thing that this does, again, like I just mentioned really quickly, but if I did max loss for $500 per contract, remember that we have a 3K portfolio for each of these, that allows for multiple positions every day if possible, if there's an opportunity. So you could do a $500 position, then another $500, then another and another. And so if you don't have this in place as you're testing, just thinking about this, it could enter a position that takes up the whole 3K for 10 days. And I don't want that. I would rather have a bunch of small positions that are, I call them like laddered entry trades where you're kind of like rungs of a ladder, small steps. And so I want to have $500 here, right? And then $500 for another trade and $500 for another trade. So that's one of the ways in which I'm just using this to increase the frequency of small positions that I can get into. The last thing that we did here is we ranked everything by alpha. Now you don't have to rank it by alpha. You can rank it by expected value and take the highest, most profitable expected value. What I wanted to do here in case there were different spreads that it was looking at, like if it was looking at a wide spread versus a narrow spread, those have different risk characteristics. One might be $500 of risk, one might be $300 of risk. And so one of those, just purely because it's a wider spread, might have a higher expected value. And so I didn't want to take the highest expected value ones. I wanted to actually take the ones that had the highest alpha, which is the expected value divided by the max loss. It kind of normalizes things across different trade ideas that you're looking at. So I wanted always ones by the highest ranking alpha. Um, that would get me the highest, again, expected value per unit of risk, essentially, that I'm taking in. So that's how I basically set up this pure EV scanner. Again, it's so dead simple to do this in just a couple checkboxes, and then I let it run and, and do its thing. So there's nothing else in here. It runs on exit options because that's mainly how it exits. It's just the one automation that it's scheduled. And then you can see inside of the position here that you can have like all of the different criteria and you can see what works and what doesn't work for this thing. So here you can see that it didn't find any trade ideas matching the criteria for GLD. So most of them were filtered out. This was last week, they were filtered out by days to expiration. Um, so that was that. And then you have today how it found a position because um, it met all the criteria. So you can see two were only filtered out by days to expiration. So now we're closer. 15 were filtered out by probability of profit. The rest were analyzed, and then it found one with an alpha of 33.17%.
The probability of profit was 83%. The max loss uh, was 33 cents per contract and the expected value was $9.39 for this particular position. So that's the position that it got into. This is, this is that position. It's really interesting actually that it did this because you can see for GLD, it was a really tight spread, like a 50 cent, essentially like a 50 cent wide spread, but it was really, really far apart um, and short duration trade. So we'll see how this one ends up working out. Again, you can see it's got a couple days to expiration. So um, we'll see how it goes, you know, through its progression here. But uh, but it's really interesting to see how these kind of bots are going to move moving forward and, and see how they kind of play out. Again, the whole idea with this portfolio, and I'll continue to document this as we go and as we go through different periods and as the portfolio gets more and more trades, the whole idea is just can we enter positions purely on an expected value basis? A couple little filters to get a lot of trade count up. But does the expected value basically play out and play true if you hold it long enough or take profits at a high enough rate? And then from there, we can start to include some things as we learn together, basically what's working, what's not working, what types of environments, you know, positions are being entered in, and we can start to, to analyze this together. But right now, it's a very simple thing. Uh, lots of positions. The goal is lots and lots of trades, lots of occurrences, high probability of success, pure expected value has to be there positive expected value has to be there to enter the trade. Um, and then we'll see where it goes from here. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy this experiment, this pure EV portfolio. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments or any thoughts on this, please let us know in the comments. And until next time, happy trading.